Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your entity data model. It is very simple. I have a database called as organization in which I have department table and employee table. This is the database on which we have been working in our past ASP.NET tutorial as well as ADU.NET tutorial. And I'm going to use the same database and we are going to work on entity framework. So in this table, I have department id department name hod and gender in which department id is primary key and in employee table i have employee id employee name employee salary gender date of birth and department id which is foreign key from department table how to create your entity data model edm which is the heart of your entity framework and it is very simple I'll go to my project. I have created a project called as Entity Framework Part 1. I'll right click on this and I'll go for Add New Items. And from this, I'm going to select ADO.NET Entity Data Model and I'll name it as Organization Model and I'll add it. It is going to add your EDM to app underscore code folder. And I'll say yes. Once I say yes, it is going to fire a window with two options for me. One generate from database, another empty model. That means it is asking me whether you want to create a model from an existing database or you want to create a model first, then create the database. Out of those three approaches, we have two options available here. One is database first, another is model first. So anyway, we are going to learn entity framework on database first approach. That means I want to generate entity data model from an existing database. I'll select generate from database and I'll say next. Now my database is organization and it has created an entity connection string. Entity connection string is nothing but same as your old connection string which contains the information about the provider data source initial catalog and user id password or your integrated security screw plus it contains some extra information that is called as metadata about your entity framework so anyway as of now i'm going to save this same in my web config file with the name organization entities and i'll say next now it is going to retrieve the database information that is all the tables I have, all the views I have and all the stored procedures that I have. So as of now I am going to work with two tables that I have with me that is department table and employee table. I am going to add these two tables to my entity data model. And I will keep this default setting as is, that is pluralize or singularize generated objects and include foreign key columns in the model and I'll say finish so here is my entity data model as you might have seen in a single department I can have n number of employees so we have one to many relationship and all the columns that I have in my database they have turned into the properties and for employee table same I got all the properties there are two extra properties that we have that is navigation properties we call it as not navigation properties that means whenever I have relationship between two tables it gives me a property using which I can navigate from this table to another table. that means if I am if I am in department table and I want to navigate from department table to employee table, I can navigate through the navigation property that is TBL employee. In the same way, if I am in employee table and if I want to navigate from employee to department table, I will be using TBL underscore department that is navigation property. So this is my entity data model. Now I'll do one thing, I'll right click on entity data model and I'll say open with XML editor 
and I'll say OK. Say yes. So this is the XML file that is generated for entity data model. And let us have a look into this file and let us see what does it contain. It contains a tag called as runtime and another tag called as design. This designer tag contains some UI related to our entity data model. That is, we have seen two graphical images of two tables. So this is all related to that, which is not very important for us. And even we are not going to touch this. And the other tag which contains runtime, this contains three important parts. One is SSDL, Storage Schema Definition Language. The other part is CSDL, Conceptual Schema Definition Language. And the third part is CS Mapping. Now, let us see what does this SSDL contain. It basically contains the information about the database and tables and the columns in that. That is, if we see TBL department, this is the table which contains department ID as auto increment column and it is of type int and department ID is primary key. And department name is of type varchar and its length is 50. It defines the complete information about the table and the columns and its types and its constraints. Like I have TBL employee that is storage schema. My data is being stored into this schema. Other is conceptual definition language. It is nothing but the information about the properties for each table and each column that is for table department the property department id is for the column department id and if you see the type it is int 32 whereas here the type was int which is a database sql server type and this is a c sharp CLR type. Same way department name is of type string. Earlier it was varchar. That is I will have in this one property for one column. And this mapping is done in CS mapping content. If you observe the scalar property department ID is mapped to the column department ID. Column name and property name. Department name is the property which is mapped to the column name department. In the same way, HOD is the property which is mapped to the column name HOD. So, this part is called as CS mapping. It is storage model and conceptual model mapping. So, at runtime, your CLR is going to generate three different files for this runtime tag. That is one for storage schema definition, another for conceptual schema definition and one more for CS mapping. So it is basically very simple. You have a table and an equivalent class for that. You have column and an equivalent property for that in the class. And if you have a foreign key, then you will have an equivalent navigation property. If whenever there is a relationship between two tables, then you will have navigation properties in both the tables. So this is your entity data model. So it is very simple. You need to right click and add your entity data model. Now, if at all, I am going to change any field in my database. Let me go back to the database. I'll explore organization DB and the table. I'll right click on the department table and I'll move for designing the table and I'm going to add a flag called as active of type bit 
and I'll say allow null and I'll save this. In our earlier models, like if we are working with ADO.NET, if we create data set and if we add a column in the database or if we make some kind of updates in the database, it was very, very difficult to reflect these changes back to our schemas or in the data set. Whereas here it is very, very simple. You need to simply go to your entity data model, right click it and say update model from database. and move to refresh select department table and say finish it has refreshed the entity data model and if i save this you can see that there is a property called as active which got added automatically so it is very simple for us to update the models whenever there are some changes in your database. So this is how we create entity data model. In our next video, we will try to explore the CS file that got generated whenever we create an entity data model. Thank you very much.